Valiant Guitars wouldn't even let an invasion stop them from making some of the best boutique custom shop level guitars I've ever played. This is a Valiant Jupiter, a boutique guitar made in Ukraine. And it's part of a special limited run we're collaborating on. It looks really vintage from the outside, but it's actually super modern. It's legitimately one of the coolest vet guitars out there. A portion of the sales are going towards helping the people of Ukraine, and I can't wait to tell you about it. Let's take a closer look. Now, Valiant approached me about a year ago. They said they were a new boutique brand out of Ukraine, and I was like, cool, I don't know any other Ukrainian guitar companies. And they asked me if I wanted to check out a guitar they thought I'd really like. That was a vintage spec Valiant Jupiter, and that guitar ended up being my guitar of the year. It was so good that when I let Chris Robertson of Blackstone Cherry try it, he didn't even plug it in. He played a couple chords and he was like, yeah, I'm buying this. And he's been putting it to good use in their live sets, which is super cool. He's one of my favorite guitarists, favorite songwriters, and was more than happy to let him have it. But that guitar was so good. I've had a Jupiter-sized hole in my heart ever since. And that's how originally this came to be. It's got the features and the worn-in feel that makes the Jupiter an extraordinary guitar. And this one has a few special modern spec changes that make it a truly outrageous custom shop quality Restamod style guitar. Now, they were in the middle of building it when their home was invaded. They hit me up and were like, hey, uh, so small problem, the area near our workshop got hit by a cruise missile. I'm like, what the f are you okay? Um, yeah, we're fine. Your guitar might be a little delayed though. Really sorry. Listen, as far as reasons why a guitar might be delayed, that's a really good one. But things are still really rough for them over there right now. So we decided rather than this being a custom one-off, which they also do, we turned this and the Smith that I got last year into a limited run with a portion of the proceeds going to save the children. They're an organization that provides much needed assistance to children and families affected by war. Getting parts and materials is understandably quite difficult for them right now, but they're aiming for 25 of each. They'll be individually numbered and the production versions will have mold graphics as well. So a quick overview of the specs. European alder body, tastefully hand-aged nitro finish and what they're calling mola pink. Quarter sawn maple neck with a slim C shape and titanium reinforcement. The fingerboard is roasted hornbeam, also known as ironwood because of how insanely hard it is, which they've also managed to somehow tastefully relic. It's got maple inlays and 22 jumbo stainless steel frets. The truss rod spoke wheel is in the roasted ironwood fingerboard, which is pretty damn cool. It's got D'Addario locking tuners, Graftech nut, and tusk string trees. Kind of funny, the rest of the guitar is relics, but then the tusk stuff is super clean. It kind of stands out but it's so small. We move. Bare knuckle polymath pickups with aged covers that can be individually split or put in parallel using the Jaguar style switches. Love that on a normal 25 and a half inch scale instrument. And one of my favorite Valiant features, the hardware, the control plates, the ebony inlaid control knobs, even the side dots, it's all made of Duralumin, a material usually reserved for aviation applications because of how strong and lightweight it is. But crazy Ukrainians, they've used it everywhere on this guitar. We've got bell bronze saddles, and the shell pink, I mean, I mean mola pink, I love it, especially with the matching headstock. So yeah, a lot of exclusive, unique, boutique features. It's a huge sleeper guitar. I mean, look at it, and then think about the specs that I just listed. Insane. So the way I like to put a guitar through its paces is by writing something. See what kind of riffs it inspires. If it inspires good riffs, it's a good guitar. So let's plug it in, get some tones, get some first impressions, and write something cool. But speaking of writing something cool, the cool pre-written segue to today's sponsor, DistroKid. Or more specifically, their new premium tool, DistroVid. Now, you've heard me talk about DistroKid before. They're the easiest way to get your music onto all the major platforms. Apple Music, Spotify, all the other ones I'm blanking on that matter just as much. DistroKid takes all the hard work out of it. Uploading is just a few clicks. If it's a cover, they'll even get the license and they don't take a cut. You keep 100% of your earnings. And a big reason as to why I and so many other people love and use DistroKid is that they're musician focused. They're constantly improving the service and adding features, evolving with the landscape to serve the modern artist. And to that point, they've just released a new premium tool, DistroVid. It's the easiest way to get your music videos 
onto all the major platforms and they don't take a cut. You keep 100% of your earnings. Essentially, it's DistroKid for music videos. DistroVid members get included with Vivo, which means the official Vivo watermark on YouTube and access to Vivo's distribution network, including Roku, Samsung and LG smart TVs, Comcast, and much more. Pricing for DistroKid starts at just 20 bucks a year for unlimited uploads. For you guys, if you use my link in the description, you can snag a bonus discount. Plus it supports the channel by letting them know that I sent you. So if you've got music to show the world, DistroKid is the way to do it. And while you're making that smart choice, let's get some first impressions and write a demo track. All right, let's write something. <laughs> All right, Chugs confirmed. Right now I'm running through the Angle Savage that's off camera over there. It's running through a custom IR that Luke and I have been working on. Nice. God fucking damn it, this guitar is so good. Honestly, man, this neck is so damn good. It's a super thin nitro and then it's been aged, so it's almost like bare wood. It's so quick. And I love how they've aged this fingerboard, man. Even Fender's custom shop doesn't do that. Kind of funny, when I got the first Jupiter, I thought that the deep fingerboard aging would have an effect on the playability. And then this one I've given stainless steel frets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways, we need some riffs. For some reason, this guitar is screaming modern metalcore to me. Like, downtuned riffs with a lot of bounce. Okay, use the drop to put this into C. Nice. I've been listening to a lot of Polaris recently, and they do this thing with tapping in the riffs that I really like. So, maybe... Okay, Architects Core, we're getting there. These frets, man, if they weren't jumbo, um, like if I was playing this on my Gibson Slash Les Paul Standard, I would not be able to do that tap. The jumbo frets are like a cheat code. So, all together. Okay, upper fret axis on this thing is actually quite good. The neck heel is subtle. It's got this bevel before a more aggressive carve, and your hand just kind of fits in that bevel. It's very comfortable. And then I guess we can go back to the first repetition, but move it down. Yeah, something like that. Okay, you get the point. I'm gonna practice that later. Next section I'm thinking should be more cordy. So far I'm really impressed with how clear these pickups are. They're bare knuckle, so I should have known. The articulation is really good. Like you can hear every string, so I'm thinking we can use some interesting voices. Like um, the Rubia chord. Yeah, you can hear every string in that. There's something here. Let me figure it out. Okay, 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 I think we have something here. And then I can have some sort of tappy lead over that. For leads, I love the single coil voice. That's something I really liked from the original Jupiter. It had the Jaguar switches. So you can have the full neck humbucker. You can have single coil. And you can even put it in parallel. Very, very cool. I fucking suck at writing leads, man. It takes me forever. So I'm just gonna do that off camera, and then, because this is a demo, we do need a clean section. We can't just chug all day. But I'm thinking since it's right after the chordy section, we can just copy those chords. Although I guess maybe single coil? Or parallel? Actually, parallel sounds pretty good. Done. Back to the fun bits. A breakdown. And what do we do in modern metalcore for breakdowns? 
That's right, we double it with the lower octave. So instead of we have Oh, that's filthy. Actually, for writing, I'm gonna take that off and then double the chugs with the octave down later. Now let's also take the Jimmy clip off. That way I can bend after the nut. We're gonna use every modern metal breakdown cliche in this. Oh, no, 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 we're gonna be trading guitars. So both guitars go, then one guitar goes, then it all comes back in for the third one. Okay, let me see if I can get this. So it's. Grape sounds unusually good with this guitar. And then for the second repetition, something I learned from Andrew Baina, if you really wanna make your breakdowns sound extra disgusting, use a ton of dissonance. So if you have one guitar chugging on the zero, have the other guitar one semitone up. That extra dissonance makes it extra filthy, which is of course what we want from a breakdown. Alright, um, this is just devolved into power chords because they sound good. But I think we've got enough riff ideas. So, I'm gonna go ahead, work on the demo track off camera. I'm really gonna have to practice that main riff. After the demo track, I'll meet you back here for some final thoughts. But first, this is how it all turned out. So I absolutely adore this guitar. It's kind of like a vintage Jaguar that's been given a normal scale length, then taken to its ultimate modern conclusion. The thing that I like most about this Valiant Jupiter, besides all the ridiculously cool modern specs in a vintage looking enclosure, is that this guitar feels played in. You know, when it comes to hand aged guitars, there's a lot more to it than just making it feel old. A lot of old guitars are just beat up. This feels like an instrument that's been well loved and well taken care of over many, many years. <laughs> The way the neck feels against your hand, the way the fretboard feels under your fingers, it's insanely comfortable and warm. 
in a way that new feeling guitars aren't. Then it's got jumbo stainless steel frets that feel like playing on glass. Guitars in this price range, it's expected that they play themselves. And this definitely does, but for me what makes it special is it's got the perfect combination of vintage and modern feels and then, of course, modern functionality as well. And genuinely, it's not something I found on any other guitar. Then there are the non-guitar factors. How the f these guys have managed to make guitars this good after having to evacuate the factory, after not being able to go back for months with the stress of being in a war zone, I have no idea. Goes to show, Valiant is not just a name. I am humbled they asked me to be a part of this limited edition run. And this guitar sounds fucking good. The bare knuckle polymaths are sick. They're a little lower output and a little brighter than the Ragnaroks, which I also really like, but they're super clear, super dynamic, and thanks to the switches, serial, single coil, and parallel, you get a ton of versatility out of them. The no load tone pod is great as well. It cuts out of the circuit at 10, more transparency, less between the pickups and the output jack. Then the liberal use of Duralumin, it all feels so damn good. That's kind of the deal with this guitar. The thin nitro, the stainless steel frets, the bell bronze saddles, it sounds damn good. It feels damn good. This is just a damn good guitar. <laughs> They're not cheap, I know, but compared to other custom shops and other high-end boutique builders in this insanely high quality bracket, you're actually getting more here for your money than you would from a lot of those. And no one's really doing the rest of on thing like this. Right now, Valiant is asking for a $110 pre-order deposit, 50% when the guitar is finished and shipped, the other 50% only after 30 days of receipt to make sure you love it. Because yeah, for this much, you want to make sure you love it, and they want to make sure you love it. Pre-order links to both this and the Mola Jupiter down below. It'll have all the specs and details about the limited run. Valiant social media will also be in the description. Um, I know they'd very much appreciate the support. <laughs> But yeah, that's about all I've got for you today. Massive shout out to my patrons. You guys keep the channel going. Thank you so much for the support. If you want to join them in supporting the channel and get bonus extras, the link will be in the description. Social media, Discord, and affiliate links are also down below. If you want to hear about the more traditional Valiant that Chris Robertson of Blackstone Cherry is using, you can click the tab right there. In the meantime, as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I will see you for the next video.